Since my heat break broke on the last video, I've been waiting impatiently for the delivery of the new heat breaks. Therefore, I started to kind of clean up the 3D printer and prepare it for the heat break transfer. So right here, I'm just smoking out the heat cartridge and then wiping it clean, which is not the greatest idea because all that smoke may be severely toxic to my lungs. So basically, I did this once and then I took it off the PCB board and I still went about it like in the old video where I just did not take everything apart to make removal as riskless as possible and I went directly from underneath the gantry which is kind of cumbersome and it can scratch up your PCB or damage it and could render your 3D printer useless until you find new components. Therefore it's better to disassemble the entire print head by starting with the shroud on the right hand side and continue from there and getting easier access to the PCB board and an easier access to remove the JST connectors from the PCB board and the heat cartridge JST connector has this unholy retainer because of the wires are thick and strong and therefore the wires could uh, undo the connector if it would not have the retainer that is the most difficult one to remove because it's in a awkward position and it has the retainer after I removed it, I put it in a vice grip to get it cleaned up. So I heated it up with the rework station because it was very difficult to remove the plastic otherwise. And I did not want to damage by keeping it in the 3D printer and heating it up like severely until it turns red. Then I used the screw with paper towel on it to clean up the heat block channels, the threaded channel and the heat cartridge channel. Let's see if let's see if these heat breaks fit this back plate cooling plate for the Titan whatever extruder. So I was very excited as the heat breaks arrived and I was eager to install them and continue assembling back the 3D printer so I can get back to printing. However, the heat block was cold and the plastic was not molten, so it took me a bit of time to actually heat it up with the rework station and attempt to thread in the heat break. And for that I started using a glove because as the heat gets transferred from the heat block into the heat break, it will burn your hand. So the glove really helped me to actually thread in the heat break. And once I got it to a good level, inserted into the heat block, I flipped it around so I can attempt to thread in the nozzle. But the problem here was that the nozzle also had plastic on it and it needed a bit of work. In addition to that, I couldn't find for the life of me the socket that properly fits the nozzle to thread it in properly and get a good feel once the nozzle aligns against the heat break. So I use this little rinky-dink key wrench which is very difficult and very short and as I was using the rework station made my life very difficult because sometimes that hot air was blowing against the glove and uh, you get to feel it and once that rubber and the glove gets heated up it takes a while to cool off and basically it transfers the heat onto your skin and it really really burns so it's very difficult now the remaining step was to mount the back plate slash cooling plate for the titan x shooter onto the heat brake and align the back plate with the heating block to position the nozzle at the front of the 3d printer when all is said and done so it took me a bit of finicking with the back plate slash cooling plate and i had to align it a few times into the vise and make sure i get the perfect alignment initially i got it wrong so i had to flip it around and as you can see i had to flip around or twist around the heat block to get the nozzle in the proper position now this is upside down but if you flip it downside up as it should be and you kind of align it in your mind's eye on the 3d printer it should be aligned to the front of the 3d printer as it gets mounted mounted into the carriage. So there are a few remaining steps and one of them was to remove the ball bearing from the 3D printed mosquito mount for the artillery Sidewinder X1 stock 3D printer. Basically all you have to do is get the mosquito hot end and then 3D print this mount and you're off to the races as long as you have all the parts. The next step is to fine tune a piece of Bowden tube to make sure that it aligns properly with the choke. 
And since I'm using the nippers or the Kevlar scissors to cut it off because I did not want a 3D printed jig, I had to kind of unflatten the tube and make sure it is round enough for the filament to fit in properly every time all the time when you feed a new filament into the extruder rather than having the filament or getting the filament stuck on the edge of the Bowden tube. After I kind of fiddled with the actual Bowden piece I had to mount this choke which maintains the filament properly aligned with the gripping gear and tries to make your life easier as you feed the filament or new filament into the extruder. After that, all I had to do is mount the heat plate with the entire assembly onto the extruder and make sure that the ball bearing on the main gear aligns with the channel or the designated spot for the ball bearing onto the back plate slash cooling plate and the screw on the top right needs to be fine-tuned because if you over tighten the screw then the gear cannot move freely which over taxes the stepper and the stepper is a pancake stepper so it overheats very easily and most of the time the entire carriage is very warm it may get to a temperature that makes it unbearable even for your hand for that i had to use some uh, cpu thermal paste to make sure that the heat from the back plate slash cooling plates onto which the heat break gets mounted and the heat gets dissipated by the heat sink with the fan and that thermal paste will do a great job of transferring the heat from the back plate into the heat sink on which the fan blows. Assembling the heat sink and the fan and the grate that kind of prevents big debris from getting into the fan fins uh, seemed to be quite a bit of a task because it took me a few tries before I got it right. Once I was done with this step, I had to turn on the printer and heat up the heating block and the nozzle. But I noticed the difference. Every time I turn on the printer before this uh, invasive procedure, the fan, the heatsink fan, would start at the same time you would turn on the printer. Now, after the printer had gone for the first time in its life into thermal runaway protection, the heatsink fan would only start cooling off the heatsink after you started heating up the nozzle which before did not happen the fan started with the 3d printer so that kind of threw me on for a loop because i cannot understand why would this happen and what actually happens within the motherboard and what kind of data is written onto the motherboard that changed this after this i loaded some filament and quick g-code to test the 3d print to see if the problem of a leaky heat break has been solved so the 3D print started and went about 60% into it when it started failing. Basically the 3D print grew a little bigger than the actual height of the nozzle and the nozzle kept on hitting it. After that I decided to interrupt the 3D print and clean the bed and then started a new 3D print when I noticed a different and a new sound. It is ironic but after eyeballing the problem where I would expect the problem could be in between the heat break and the heat block I saw plastic oozing out. So basically I haven't fixed anything and that got me thinking what could I have done wrong in the process of fixing this issue. So I took it apart again because I wanted to retighten properly the heat break and the nozzle and make sure that the seal is properly created in between the heat break and the nozzle. But when I attempted to fix the issue the thermistor stopped reading the temperature and therefore I fiddled with the thermistor a little bit and then I could see that the wire got broken. And now I am without a thermistor that could fix the problem and the old thermistor is stuck into the heating block so I will have to use new heat blocks. So I quickly order new parts in the form of a hot end kit that has the thermistor, the heating cartridge and the heat block, the nozzle and the silicone sock. But until then I bid the mon ami's farewell and adieu.